High Plains Technology says it's time for school. Well, we've got High Plains Technology in the studio again because it is time for school. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Katie Shirley here, marketing coordinator with High Plains Tech Center. And today I have with me Jennifer Dew, and she's the director of daytime programs. And um, first, I'm going to start out with just a couple things um, coming up that I wanted to make sure we talked about is um, we have opened up applications for our practical nursing program. And so those applications are going to be due May 31st. There are some pre-requirements that um, are going to need to be met before then. Um, For instance, ACT testing. So tell us about this on-site ACT testing and why they need to do that. Um, If they do not have an ACT score from... uh Previously, we offer residual ACT testing on-site at High Plains Technology Center. There is, I think, one date coming up soon and then another one at the end of May. Right, and those are the last opportunities. Last opportunities. So check our social media for those dates because you have to um, enroll and pay by a certain date before the test date. Yes. And what about if they um, have an ACT? Like, is there a certain year, like if it was 10 years ago they took it? Um, we will take an ACT score up to five years. Five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it's past that range, they're going to need to do that. And then we also have some other short-term programs that are prerequisites also. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to want to go online and look at our um, short-term classes to see um, which classes we are offering that are one of those prerequisites. And this class will run August to May August 2022 to May 2023, and we're about to have graduation for this class um, in the end of May. And yesterday, Alliance Health came and visited with the students to share with them um, about all the employment opportunities that they currently have available. So hopefully be getting them um, jobs and they'll be ready to get started as soon as they take their NCLEX and pass it, hopefully. They're getting excited. <laughs> yes, kind of the end of year. Um, also, the uh, WinTech program applications are due this Friday. So um, there's no no prerequisites really on that. Just fill out an application. And um, that class will begin, do you remember when that one? That's I do not. A, July, I believe it's I like it July, July, early July. And so we'll also be graduating WIN students Um same day as PN I, um, graduation, I think that's May 27th. So um, they are also busy going through interviews and will hopefully all have a job secure before they're even graduating. Another big um, news item for us is our um, in our Global Wind Organization. So this is a wind training. We have our wind tech training and then we have our GWO training. So we are certified to be a global wind organization training site. And so that, um, in the wind industry, all of the employees must go through this GWO training. And and we offer that and have for quite a few years now. And um, the annual report for GWO just came out. And we are number four in the entire world. That's amazing. Yes, with the number of trainings we've done and number one in the Americas. So I think we've done 9,400 or 9,700 some training certifications have come through. And so that is, um, the instructors are always blowing and going up there. Um, and then just a couple of health pro, um, classes coming up on in short term. Um, so we're kind of winding down the short term classes for the spring semester. And then one other deal we'll talk about, let's talk about the plant cell. Yes. <laughs> so I think quite a few people already know about the plant cell on social media. I love when I share about the plant cell, hundreds of likes and shares. So um, give us a little bit of feedback on the service careers plant cell and how that goes and what it benefits. Um, the The proceeds from the plant cell are used to fund activities throughout the year for their uh, if, if they travel to competition which they will be traveling to state competition at the end of May. And that that helps pay for that. And then part of the proceeds helps um, their Special Olympic team travel and participate in different events throughout the year. 
Awesome. And now the plant variety options they have is a large selection. Yes. <laughs> and really good prices. Yes. Um, and beautiful plants. Beautiful plants. They work hard all year. Um, at the beginning of the year, they're doing the little plugs mm-hmm. and then busy watering, transferring them. And Yes. they Throughout the growing season, they'll start with plugs, put them in a container, and then when they outgrow that container, they repot them in bigger containers. So they're very hardy plants. Yeah. And in fact, earlier this week... They had pulled them all outside on Monday when it was so beautiful and were watering them and letting them have a little bit of real sunshine and then moved them back into the greenhouse. So that's going to be April 21st and 22nd. And I believe Mrs. Rogers is looking at like a 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. time frame. We're not 100 percent on that yet. So just stay tuned for the for sure hours. And we have that at High Plains Tech Center. And do you know, are we in the auto shop this year? We no, we are still working on those details, Location. trying to finalize, okay. finalize that. So We'll be mo- somewhere behind the school, most likely. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, April 21st and 22nd. And then speaking of Special Olympics, so that is an exciting event. Yes, we are so excited. Um, we have not been able to hold an area event since um, our our track and field event in 2020 or 2020 before COVID. before COVID got canceled. So this is the first event we've held since then. And the athletes are super excited. The area management team, which um, consists of special ed teachers around the district, members of OARC, myself, um, we're so excited to be able to offer this again. And now you are the director? Yes, I'm of... the area management team director. Okay. Um, Karen Rogers, Megan Lasley, Colleen Hutchins, Cindy Stone, Steve Foster are all members of that area management team. Okay. So and now that's going to be tomorrow. That is yes. Thursday. Yes. Tomorrow yes. and at the Woodward High School yes. at the football stadium, yes. right? And everyone's invited. In public yes. is invited to come watch. And Woodward before COVID was the first year we actually had it on a Thursday and Woodward let out school so that didn't let out school, but let the students come and fill the stands so that the athletes could have um, spectators cheering for them. And it was just amazing. So they um, were continuing on with that. And so we're going to register the athletes at noon and we will begin the games as soon as that process is finished. So probably we're hoping to shoot for about 12, 15, 12, 20. Okay. And you said that um, all those involved in it are mainly this year is more of the Woodward area. Yes. Our turnout is not quite as big in the past, which, you know, we kind of expect a little bit. But we have Woodward schools are participating, the OARC, High Plains Technology Center. I believe we have an athlete from Moreland. Okay. So it, typically in the past, we've had athletes from um, Thomas Fay, Custer School District, uh, Okarchi. So we've had some other athletes, but I think it's a good start. Yes, building back up. And after. what are some of the events that they, well, a lot of track and field kind of mm-hmm. events? We'll have track and field. We have a softball throw, which is very popular. We have a turbo jab, which is kind of like a javelin with a football on the end of it. And there's a shot put, we have standing long jump, running long jump, and then your traditional uh, running events. And so do you have lots of volunteers? We do. (laughs) I was going to say, it sounds like you'd need a lot for all of those We do. Um, We haven't advertised volunteers as much this year because we've still been under a few COVID protocols. Since we're Special Olympics is a national Mm -hmm. organization, we have to follow their rules. Yeah. Yes. So we've... We haven't advertised for as many volunteers, but we'll have volunteers running the uh, timing on the lanes, getting athletes to and from their events, and then handing out the medals. So Awesome. Do they hand out the medals all at the end with one, like, kind of awards, or is it more just as they complete the we, event? We probably start maybe halfway through the events handing out the medals, because if we waited till the yeah. end, it, it, Be a whole it's just kind of, or so yes. of just awards. <laughs> So it's kind of organized chaos. Yeah. Well, it sounds really fun. I'm I'm excited to go check it out this year. And now you also have a Special Olympics at a different time of year. That's bowling. Yes. So is it just these two events usually that annually are held? We usually for- have Bashi, which uh-huh. is kind of lawn bowling. And then we may be looking at adding next year Cornhole. Cornhole was something that the Special Olympics National Organization added as an event this past year. 
So that may be something that we could pick up. Some of our athletes are getting up there in their years. Yeah. And so track and field is not their thing. And since we weren't able to have bowling or washi, maybe we can add cornhole too to give them an extra event to do. Yeah. And I've enjoyed seeing our students and some of our past students in the halls, you know, doing their training and getting all geared up. For yes. They've Thursday. been hard at work. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, if you are not following us on social media yet, um, I encourage you to do so. I post pretty regularly all that's going on, and you can get to know what's coming up. So um, follow us at High Plains Tech Center. And thank you, Jennifer, for being my guest. And thank you all for listening. We'll be back here next week on 100.1.